Team Group Dark Z Alpha is a high-performance DDR4 memory that features an armored aluminum heatsink design, comes with an overclocking profile, and is compatible with AMD's latest Ryzen processors. To learn more, check out the link in the video description. In my last video where I reviewed the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, I promised that I'm going to compare it to the FX8350, and while I'm still working on it and the video will be up shortly, today I decided to compare the FX8350 to the 6300 due to a popular demand. To my surprise, there are quite a few of you who are still looking forward to buying either a 6 or 8 core FX processor. I've also been getting comments from people who own an FX6300 and not sure whether they should overclock their CPU or just simply upgrade to an 8 core part for that extra performance. I'm also kind of curious myself to see the performance difference between the two, so what we're going to do is have a look at how both of these CPUs perform out of the box, then we're going to overclock the 6-core FX and see how it stacks up compared to 8 cores at stock, and of course we're going to overclock the FX8350 and see how they compare. For the system specs, both CPUs are going to be using a 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, a Zalman CNPS 14X CPU cooler, 16GB of DDR3 1866MHz memory, a GTX 970 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. Do keep in mind that even though we will be looking at stock performance, overclocking results is what we're going to concentrate on the most. Also, while we're mainly going to focus on recent titles, just out of curiosity, I decided to include a couple of older games as well. Okay, so let's begin using the out-of-the-box configurations. Starting off, we have Cinebench R15, where the FX8350 is unsurprisingly ahead in both single and multi-core tests by 5 and 53% respectively. Next, we have Blender, and using the BMW benchmark, the FX8350 is able to render the scene 8 minutes faster, making it 35% better, and using the classroom scene, we're getting a similar uplift. Next up, we have Sony Vegas, and here the FX8350 is able to render the project almost half an hour faster, which is a 30% increase over the FX6300. Next on the list is V-Ray, where the FX8350 scores 4,107 points, making it 51% faster than the FX6300. I think it should be no surprise that the FX8350 is going to perform better in other software as well, so I'll just leave the results here if you'd like to check them out. Moving on to gaming, let's quickly go through the older titles first. Starting off, we have Warhammer Space Marine, and here we see a pretty big difference of 15 to 20 FPS in favor of the 8-core FX processor. Next, we have Saints Row the Third. Now, this is a very tough game to benchmark since frames are always very inconsistent and can change every run, though it should be clear that the FX8350 does have a lead of roughly 5 to 10 frames per second. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Siege using the Vulcan implementation, and here the game runs significantly better on the 8-core FX processor. Moving on, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider using DirectX 12, and here the FX8350 performs roughly 20 frames better, while also delivering slightly more consistent frame times. Using DirectX 11, we also see the 8-core FX performing around 5 frames better than the FX6300. 
I think that is enough testing using the stock configuration, so let's have a look at the temperatures and power consumption. Since the FX8350 performs better across the board, it should be no surprise that it's going to run hotter and consume more power, which as we can see is exactly what's going on here. The FX6300 maxes out at just 37 degrees, while the VRMs are reaching 45 degrees Celsius, which is 11 and 15 degrees cooler compared to the 8-core FX processor. Looking at power consumption numbers, we can see that both CPUs basically consume the same amount of power at idle, though when it comes to gaming as well as rendering a project in Sony Vegas, the FX8350 consumes roughly 18 and 39% more power respectively. Alright, so now let's move on to probably the most interesting part of the video. We're going to see if we can reach or even surpass the performance of the stock FX8350 by overclocking the FX6300. I managed to overclock the 6-core FX to 4.6 GHz using 1.4 volts, got the north bridge set to 2190 MHz while the hypertransport is at 2628 MHz, and the RAM is clocked at 2044 MHz. Now, if you've seen my FX6300 review, you've probably noticed that the Northbridge clock is significantly lower, and the reason for that appears to be the new 16GB memory that I got recently. For some reason, using the older 8GB HyperX Genesis Dex, I have no issues pushing the Northbridge to 2630MHz, which is now impossible with the new HyperX Furry memory. To be honest though, it's not that big of a deal since overclocking the CPU as well as the RAM is what matters the most, so we're not really losing anything here. And with all that out of the way, let's have a look at Cinebench R15 results. For the single core score, the FX6300 is now pulling 10% ahead, though it is still 15% behind in multi-core compared to the 8-core FX processor. Using Blender, we can see that overclocking significantly reduced the render times of the 6-core FX processor, though it is still 15 and 17% behind in both BMW and Classroom scenes, respectively. Looking at this software that I'm scared to say the name of, we see the 6-core FX performing 16% worse than the FX8350. Moving on, we have Sony Vegas, and here the FX6300 is just 9% behind the 8-core FX processor. Next, we have V-Ray, where the 6-core FX is 13% behind compared to the stock FX8350. It is pretty much a similar situation in other tests as well. Overclocking the 6-core FX processor to 4.6 GHz does increase performance quite a bit, though unfortunately it is not enough to even reach stock FX8350 levels of performance. But what about gaming? Testing Warhammer Space Marine, we can see the FX6300 now beating the stock 8-core processor by roughly 5 frames per second. To be honest, I expected a bigger difference in a presumably single-threaded title, especially since the entire system is pretty much overclocked to its limits, but apparently even a game from 2011 can take advantage of extra cores. Moving on we have Saints Row the Third, and here the 6-core FX is also performing roughly 5 to 7 frames better than the FX8350. Next, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and while both CPUs do perform very similar, the stock FX8350 is still a few frames ahead. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see that even at stock, the 8-core FX still has a small lead, of roughly 5 frames per second. What's interesting is that using DirectX 11, the 6-core FX does perform better by a couple of frames. Next up, we have The Division 2, where the overclocked FX6300 seems to edge out the FX8350 by a few frames using the built-in benchmark, 
though jumping into the game itself, the 8 core FX takes the lead for some reason. Overclocking the FX6300 does make it run pretty hot, and now the CP is reaching 72 degrees, while the VRM's maxed out at 75 degrees Celsius, which is significantly hotter compared to a stock FX8350. It should be no surprise that by maxing out the overclock, we're also going to significantly increase the power consumption, and while both CPUs basically consume the same amount at idle, the FX6300 consumes around 12% more power under load. Alright, so finally let's overclock the FX8350 and see how these CPUs compare. For this one, I got the FX8350 overclocked to 4.51 GHz using 1.46 volts. Both Northbridge as well as Hypertransport are set to 2420 MHz, and the RAM is clocked at 2053 MHz. Again, the clocks are slightly different compared to what I had in my previous videos due to a memory upgrade. Looking at Cinebench R15 results, the FX8350 is now nearly on par with the 4.6 GHz FX 6300 in terms of single core, though when it comes to multi-core performance, the 8-core processor pulls ahead by a 31% margin. Using the BMW scene in Blender, the 8-core FX is now able to render it 24% faster, while using the Classroom scene, it is 26% quicker compared to the FX 6300. Next, we have this software once again, and here the FX8350 outperforms the 6300 by 34%. Sony Vegas is next, where the FX8350 got the project rendered 19% faster than the 6-core FX processor. Using V-Ray, we see the 8-core FX once again outperforming the FX6300 by 27%, and feel free to stop the video here if you'd like to have a look at Intel Burn Test as well as 7-Zip results. Moving on to gaming, we have Warhammer Space Marine, and here we see a roughly 10 FPS advantage in favor of the 8-core FX processor. Next, we have Saints Row the Third, where the FX8350 performs just a few frames better than the FX6300. Since Rainbow Six Siege is one of those titles that can take advantage of extra cores, we see the 8-core FX performing roughly 15 frames better over the FX 6300. The FX8350 also shines in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, outperforming the FX6300 by around 10 to 15 frames per second. Division 2 is next, where the FX8350 delivers around 10 frames more compared to the 6-core FX processor. Next up, we have Apex Legends, and here the FX8350 has a massive advantage of 20 frames over the FX6300, and as if that was not enough, it also provides a much more stable frame time in certain areas, making the game feel significantly smoother. Even at stock, the FX8350 delivers a much better frame time performance compared to the 6-core part. For our final game, we have Battlefield 5, where the FX8350 performs better by around 10 to 15 frames per second, while also delivering slightly better frame time performance. Oh, and by the way, Battlefield 5 received an update recently that significantly improved performance on the 6 and 8 core FX processors, making the game much more playable than it was before. 
Looking at temperatures, we can see that the 8-core FX runs around 3 degrees cooler, though the VRMs are running 16 degrees Celsius hotter compared to the FX 6300. And finally, we have power consumption, where once again both CPUs consume the same amount at idle, though under load the FX8350 consumes more power, which should be no surprise since it performs better across the board. Basically, whether you're looking forward to buying a used FX CPU or you're an FX6300 user and want more performance, just get an FX8350. Even if you use it at stock, you're mostly going to get higher frames, smoother experience, and faster render times, not to mention significantly better thermals and power consumption compared to an overclocked FX6300. They're pretty cheap nowadays, especially the lower clocked models, and sometimes can even be sold with a decent air cooler that can be used for a small overclock. By the way, I have an AMD FX overclocking guide, which you can watch in the card at the top right corner. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out more of my videos over here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.